Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be going over FPV cameras, what I use, the settings that I use on the camera to set everything up for contrast, sharpness, all those good things. We're going to show you some tips and some little things that will make your video hopefully better when you use your DVR or if you're trying to get a better just image quality out of your FPV cam in general. So let's get right to it. All right, so this is the camera we are going to be talking about today. This is the Foxeer Aero V3 camera. It's got the cool little scratch and sniff sticker here. I wonder what it smells like. But, um, yeah, this is a CCD camera, and it's uh, 650 TVL. I like it. I've been actually using these cameras since, like, version 1. I've always liked them because uh, I actually did like the mic that was in, built in in the front of the camera, which was super cool. Um, now, comparing these things, I do have... Uh, a run cam here. This is pretty much the run cam layout. I'm going to show you the quick gripes that I have. Uh, here's the two cams. Before we open up this box, um, I do like that the V3 switched over to an aluminum housing, which is nice. And uh, before it was a plastic housing, the little side little things where you screw to the uh, bolt into would always pop out. Uh, run cam has a nice little aluminum housing as well. This is their Eagle cam. It's a CMOS cam. I actually am having trouble with CMOS cams right now due to the fact that they don't pick up scraggle and things like that and little, little details very well, um, like a CCD. Uh, so when it comes to this time of the year where a lot of leaves are dead and things, I can't use this camera, even though I do like the resolution that comes out of a camera like this. Um, I know Fox here has a camera, a really good CMOS. Uh, camera that's coming out so I'm really excited to see that because um, I'm honestly not a big fan of, of run cam um, nothing against them but just I don't like certain things like one quirk is this is one of my main reasons uh, I don't like plugging into just mess with my settings into this little port once it's inside you can see it, once it's inside a um, mini quad like this one here it's very very hard to get inside there to the port but if you look over here, I could probably just pull this one out. There is this little connector right here. And this little connector is hooked up to the whole wiring harness. I could tuck it right in. And that whole wiring harness on the Fox Ear hooks up to this whole deal here. So um, let's open this guy up and I'll show you what we got here. That was the dullest razor blade cut I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we got this guy open. Oh, noise and toy. All right, there you go. Look how pretty that looks. We'll pull this guy out of here. Comes in this little uh, foam deal. Kind of cool. Um, dump the contents out here. You got a little instruction manual. We got a little card for something. And in this little box here, we got the covers and the little mounts and all that stuff. And this is what I wanted to show you guys was this little board. So this is the board that you're going to plug into this little wiring harness mount. You can see that everything on here is connected to it. So we'll plug this guy in. Uh, get in there. Nice, tight JST. I actually like that. It won't be coming out. And this guy just kind of lives inside your your mini quad and when you're ready for it um, make sure you line up the pins correctly plug it in and you can control your OSD uh, if you want to use the native OSD on here or if you're using like a beta flight board or steel PDB or minimum OSD or anything uh, you could use those but if you want to use just the inboard one which is very basic just voltage battery uh, voltage battery voltage amps no I don't even know if it has amps I don't use it we'll look at it right now and we'll go through it. But this is uh, this is what's nice. You carry this in your bag, and that's all that you need to carry around. Where this one, you have to carry the thing and try and somehow dig into your mini quad and get a, the plug in there. Um, yeah, just for that alone, I don't like this one. All right, so let's get into the actual menus and everything that you could do with this camera here for the settings. This is what we came here to see, after all. So, I push down on the top button on the board that you hook up to the camera, puts you into this menu. Here you could put in your name and numbers, whatever you want to do for your title screen. That's going to be this name section here. You could turn it on and off. Time is the time that it has been on since you plugged in your battery. Um, power, 
that's your battery voltage, and so on. Uh, this very nice little OSD, if you're not currently using the Betaflight OSD or one of the other ones, this is a good little setup to have on the camera, and it's a nice feature that they put it in there. But I turn everything off, hit exit, because I use the Betaflight one that you see above. Next thing up is, uh, let's get into the menu. Lens, you don't need to mess with that, so let's not even talk about it. Exposure. You come in an exposure, uh, leave the shutter on auto. Brightness, a good thing to do with brightness, and I'd say my best rule of thumb is check out like how it looks outside, inside. I usually try and adjust my camera to the inside here and see how it kind of looks like with a window peering outside if you're at your house. Things like that because, I mean, I could see outside pretty good. The car there, the tree behind it and everything. The I know it, it's it's pretty sharp. Um, and that aspect of things and the colors and everything look good in here. I like the brightness is where it's at. I do not like having shadows um, in the video. So that goes to DWDR here. You can turn this on and off and you can see how it brings the, the shadows out. This is like a wide dynamic range type of thing. And uh, yeah, usually it comes off. Make sure you turn that on and it's going to help you a lot. That These are like my tips. Uh, what I'd have to say like first off with anything is always check brightness and wide dynamic range so that way um, things just don't get messed up with the shadows and you guys can't see things and branches and whatnot and you're crashing and screwed because you couldn't see it white balance this one this one's pretty personal um, you can mess around with the blue and the red I like a warmer look I don't like a colder blue look or something like this I just I'm not into it um, I like it a little warmer I don't like it too warm I see some guys cameras kinda look like this and kinda yellow and what not, just, I don't know. I balance it out, 82, 95. It's a good look. It looks pretty natural to me, um, and that's that's what I like. I, I have a lot of you guys ask me what my settings are, so that's why I'm kind of going through these. Black light, black light, it's not a club. It's a backlight. Uh, don't mess with that. Leave that off. Day and night, leave it on auto. If uh, you don't, it's going to look like this, black and white, or it's always going to be in color. If the it gets too dark out or you go somewhere and it's just you can't see because it's in color still, uh, trust me, having it on auto and it's switching to black and white will help you see in the night a lot better. DPC, we don't mess with the DPC. Special, let's go in here. Cam title, uh, I don't need to mess with that. I don't have a title on mine. I used to put FAQ. You all know what that means. But, yeah, whatever. Um... I don't know why it says on. It's I don't have anything written in there. Motion, privacy, all this stuff, leave it off. Image adjust. So, um, this lens shadow thing, I leave it off. I've never really messed with it. 2 DNR on mirror, I leave it off. FPV Provo, I saw him one time like mirror the image on here and it made him like do his backyard track backwards in a sense. That was pretty cool. Uh, font color, don't mess with that. Contrast, okay. So contrast for me is an important one. Notice the, the window outside. This is what I was talking about. So I like to find a good point of contrast, and I think you guys should do it too. If it goes like this, you could see a little bit more detail or something maybe outside, but you lose a lot of the image. Everything turns into shadows. Like I said, you just don't want to have shadows in there. Too bright really isn't good either. It blows a lot of things out, especially if you're going to be going from dark to light. Find a good, just balanced ground for your eyes and everything that looks good to you. And trust me, contrast is like a good one just to find a good middle ground. 125 is like spot on for me. I think if you guys use that, you guys will be pretty happy with it as well. Sharpness, crank that thing all the way up. Have everything nice and sharp. Uh, display, CRT, I don't think I ever mess with that. Negative, nah. That's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure. That's it, guys. I mean, this stuff, you really don't want to mess with. This is just camera info and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's about it. You can reset the cam if you mess things up and you want to try it all over again. But I think we've gone through everything, and uh, we could exit this whole, whole guy here. All right, guys, so I hope this video helped you guys out. So you better understand some of the settings, or you guys could just use my settings. I feel like they're pretty good um, with the Foxier Aero Cam. I'm not sure. I believe I had them pretty close on the Run Cam camera. But like I said, definitely play with it outside, inside, everything with the settings. Get used to what they do. And that's like my biggest tip I could give you guys. You guys will understand it very quickly. It's easy to figure out. And the only thing is you just got to do it. The stock settings, they're good and all, but it does help to go in there and adjust them to yourself. 
But like always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to check out our podcast, Team Failsafe Podcast. It's uh, on Libsyn. You guys could check it out. I think we have it on iTunes or if you have a podcast catcher, you guys could check it out there. I love that a lot of you guys leave comments here and there and everything. It's pretty awesome. I'm stoked for that. You can check out our website. We have like team uh, podcast gear and just a bunch of stuff on our website as well that you guys could check out and you might have heard our little venture with ethics limited that me and steel we're talking about on our podcast you could go to that website it's www.ethixltd.com and sign up for basically to get the newsletter letters and everything once we get going with that but thanks for watching make sure you guys subscribe peace take numero dos